In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, a merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto all of my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a call that our name, servant to the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The end product for this morning is Psalm 22, verses 23 to 31. We will pray Psalm 22, verses 23 to 31, responsibly half verse for half verse, and I will begin.
thee. Be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith, to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the reading of the lessons. The Old Testament reading appointed for this, the second Sunday in Lent, recorded for us in the 17th chapter of Genesis, verses 1 through 7, and verses 15 and 16, starting with verse 1. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me. And be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you, and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. For I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you, throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you, and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be your name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be God. The epistle reading for us this morning, for us in the fifth chapter of Romans, verses 1 to 11, starting with verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope in the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. For a while, we were still weak at the right time. Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we saved by him from the wrath of God. For 
If while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 8, verses 27 to 38.
us a lesson. Did Abram fell on his face? And God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. For I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. This is the word of the Lord. Considering these words penned by Moses, some of the inspirational spirit, the divine theme of the for today's meditation is the name. A name is really, really important because a name captures the essence of the thing for which it is named for. So a walleye is a walleye, a blue jay is a blue jay, a rose is a rose. I got a name, and you got a name. Your name captures all of your essence, all of your body, all of your spirit, all of your soul, all of your mind. Sarai. And they started out the land of Ur 
gave to them, and God chose them, and anointed them, and appointed them. God allowed them into his presence. He spoke and they heard. He gave to them and they received the gift of faith. And as our God spoke to them, notice, he revealed his name to them. I am the Lord God Almighty. And the seeds of faith were planted in their heart. And when they came to faith, it included a name change. Abram to Abraham, because he would be the father of many nations and the father of kings. And it's true. Father Abraham was the father of all the Jews. Father Abraham was the father of all the Muslims through his son Ishmael by Hagar. Father Abraham was the father of all Christians because he too had faith in the promised Messiah and was credited in his righteousness. And he too was justified by grace through faith. Just like you. And just like me. And the name Sarai was changed to Sarah because she, because she would be the mother of many nations and also the mother of kings. Of you and me, the royal priests and believers, the guys of the royal kings, the gals of the royal queens. And most importantly, the mother of Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now it comes down to you, and now it comes down to me. It was our God who also called us from the land of unbelief to the land of belief. He came to us at the baptismal pond, and as the water was comprehended in the word, he called us by our name and gave to us his name. And as we heard the voice in the word of the Lord, he then revealed his name to you and me. I am the Lord God Almighty, the God who goes with the name I am that I am. And now when he gave to us the faith, now he is our God. When we entered the waters of baptism, we entered the waters of baptism wearing the last name of unbeliever. We passed through the water, comprehended in the word, came out the other side of the faith. And now you and I, we wear and bear the name of Christian. We wear and bear the name of Christ. Wherever we go, whatever we do, we wear and we bear his name. And now Christ is the center part of our identity. Who we are and what we are. A Christian guy or girl, sealed in baptism and the death and resurrection of Christ. A Christian pastor, a Christian rancher farmer, a Christian doctor, a Christian nurse, a Christian teacher, sealed in baptism by the death resurrection of Christ. A Christian husband, a Christian wife, or a Christian single, sealed in baptism in the death and resurrection of Christ. A Christian father, or a Christian mother, or a Christian son, or a Christian daughter, sealed in baptism in the death and resurrection of Christ. Because you and I now wear and bear the name of Christian. No matter where we go, no matter what we do, we always wear and bear his name. Back to the gospel lesson for today. In the gospel lesson for today, Jesus the teacher used this as a teaching moment for his students, the disciples. And he told them what must happen to him because he is given the name of the office of Christ. The one who is anointed and appointed set aside of his baptism to all who are required for all the forgiveness of our sins and all of our salvation. And Jesus told the disciples plainly, he must go into Jerusalem one last time. He must be handled by the hands of wicked men. 
They will cause him to suffer and to die on a cross on Good Friday. And the third day he shall be raised again. Simon Peter heard these words, and these words burned his ears. He did not like what he heard. And who could blame him? Simon Peter loved Jesus as his master, as his Lord, as his Savior. He did not want any hurt or harm to come to his Jesus. But the problem with this is Simon Peter expected things to go this way, only to find out that God had not recited things are going to go that way. So Jesus rebuked Simon Peter and said to Simon Peter, Simon Peter, get behind me, Satan. Because you don't have in mind the things of God, but they have in mind the things of man. And now Simon Peter, who wore and bore the name of Christ, now he would have to learn the hardest thing about being a Christian. To deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow God, his word, his way, and his will. Now it comes down to you and me. You and I are just like Simon Peter. Now you and I are the ones who wear and bear the name of Christ. And many times we go to be Almighty in prayer with the expectation that he's going to answer our prayer this way here, only to find out that he's already decided He's going to answer our prayer going that way there. And then we have to do the hardest thing that a Christian must do. Deny ourselves. Pick up our cross daily. And follow Him. His word. His way. And His will. But here's the problem. We didn't get our way. So now we're angry and upset and anxious. So we murmur and we grumble and we complain. And we all murmur, we all grumble, we all complain, we all fall short. So we look to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who does not fall short. His first name is Jesus which means the Lord now saves. His last name is not Christ. Christ is the name of the office he holds, the promised Messiah, the one anointed, appointed, and set aside to all the work required for all of our forgiveness of sins and all of our salvation. For all the times you and I and I have not denied ourselves and picked up our cross and followed the word in the way and will of God, Jesus did. And so Jesus, he did go to Jerusalem one last time. He was hand on the hands of wicked men. They did cause him to suffer and die on a cross on Good Friday. And he was raised again on Easter Sunday. To beat all sin, and Satan and death for you and me. So you and I can have forgiveness and life and salvation. For all the times we have not lived up to the name Christian, Jesus always lives up to the name Christ. And because he lives up to the name Christ, he comes to you and me who wears and bears the name of Christian and helps us to deny ourselves and take our cross and follow him. His word, 
in a different way. And that's what St. Paul talks about in the epistle lesson for today. We rejoice in suffering because suffering produces perseverance. The ability for you and me to keep plodding along and keep plugging away. Perseverance leads to endurance. So you and I can be the like the Timex watch that takes a licking and still keeps ticking. So you and I can be like the Energizer Bunny and just keep going and going and going and going. On all of loose faith and fall by our side, we just keep going and going and going, one step in front of the other. Endurance leads to character. You and I wear and bear the name of Christ, Christian. You and I have Christian character. What that means is you and I take a stand. Notice what Jesus says in the last part of the gospel lesson for today. We are not ashamed of his words. We stand firm upon his words. And we stand tall and we stand proud. If God says it, it is. If God says it is right, it is right. If God says it is wrong, it is wrong. And we stand on God's word, because we wear and bear the name of Christ. So we do not support abortion. We believe that life begins at conception, because that's what God says in his word. King Davis tells us in Psalm 51, And sin did my mother conceive me. So we don't care what the science says. And we don't care what the powers that be say. And we don't care what is politically correct. We don't care. Because all that is from dust and dirt, and it's going to return to dust and dirt again. And we don't care about the dust, and we don't care about the dirt. But we do care about what God says in his word. And we stand tall. We stand proud. We wear and bear his name. And we do not support euthanasia. Because God says that he is the one who goes by the name. I am the Lord God Almighty. He decides when life begins. He decides when life ends. So we don't care about what the powers that be say, and we don't care about the science, and we don't care about what is politically correct. We don't care. Because we are Christians. We have Christian character. We wear and bear the name of Christ. And as we have Christian character, consider where our God has placed us. He has placed us in the Midwest, in ag country. We are farmer ranchers. We know how to get it done. Do it right the first time, so you don't got to do it a second time. We know how to get it done. And sometimes to get it done, it's not done until it's done. So we keep pounding away. We keep grinding away until it is done. When it is done, it is done. We as God's people, we wear and bear the name of Christ. We have Christian character. What are your lights that shine before men? You see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And character leads to hope. It's confident hope in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Confident hope in all of his words and all of his promises. And confident hope in our God who goes by the name I am, the Lord God Almighty. This brings us to the last part here. So, what are you and I wearing and bearing the name of Christ supposed to do in the end times and final days when the world was coming apart at the seams? Everything is uncertain. Everything is unsure. Everything
everything is crazy and chaotic and out of control. So what are you and me supposed to do who wear and bear the name of Christ? And the answer is to follow those who have gone before us who also wore and bore the name of Christ. Like Father Abraham and Sarah. When God told Father Abraham and Sarah he called them to leave the land of Ur to travel from the wilderness to Canaan, a promised land. And they did not have a clue as to where they were going. They were forced to put all their faith and trust in our God who goes by the name, I am the Lord your God Almighty. And he led. And they followed. But now your job and my job is to make your pilgrimage to the wilderness of life for the baptism of the promised land. None of us knows it's going to happen tomorrow. None of us knows it's going to happen next week. None of us knows it's going to happen next year. But God does. He directs. And we follow. In Proverbs, King Solomon tells us, our God permits us to pick out the goal and to pick out the objective. He directs every step. His word is a lamp unto our feet, and a light unto our path. By all accounts, King Solomon was the king of a small country. The Lord had kept his promise that he had made in the Old Testament lesson before today, and richly blessed Father Abraham. Father Abraham had lots and lots and lots of stuff and things. He had lots of servants male and female servants. He had lots of livestock, lots of cattle, lots of sheep. He had lots of birdmen. But he was a patriarch. Patriarchs were nomads. They didn't stay in one place at one time. They moved about every two or two and a half years. And so Papa Abraham had underneath him what was amounted to a small country. Could you imagine moving a small country from point A to point B every two or two and a half years. What an endeavor. What an undertaking. And where was all the water going to come from? Where was all the food going to come from? Where was all the pasture land going to come from? For all the cattle and all the sheep. Where was all that going to come from? For God goes with a name. I am the Lord God Almighty. I am that I am. I cause to be what I cause to be. The same is true for you and me. We make our pilgrimage from the baptism of one to the promised land. Somehow, way, shape, or form, your God will always provide for you. And our God will always provide for me. You and I wear and bear. So Jesus tells us, consider the birds of the air. The birds of the air don't plant anything over here. They don't harvest anything over here. They don't store up anything in barns over here. But our God who created the birds of the air sees to it. Even the birds of the air have food to eat and water to drink and trees in which to build a nest. Consider the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow. Even for the grass of the field, our God provides sunshine and rain. Now you're not more than the birds of the air. Now you're not more than the grass of the field. Yes, you are. You wear and bear the name of Christ. And somehow, some way, shape, or form, God will also provide for you. He goes by the name, I am Last thing is this. His father Abraham and Sarah made their way to the wilderness, to the land of Canaan. They had to go into places that were already occupied by other kings and other people and powerful men and powerful clans. And some were nasty, some were mean, some were hostile, some were aggressive, some were warlike. So what was Father Abraham? 
Abraham and Sarah supposed to do? To depend upon our God, who goes by the name, I am the Lord God Almighty. And he went before them, and watched over them, and took care of them, and protected them. Keep one thing in mind. You and I wear and bear the name of Christ. We belong to what's called the church militant. The fallen, broken world in which you and I live hates you and me. Hates Jesus, hates all things sacred and holy. So you and I can expect in the days ahead to suffer, to be slighted, to be persecuted, because you and I wear and bear the name of Christ. So what are we supposed to do? Trust in our God, who goes by the name, I am the Lord God Almighty. He sees everything. He hears everything. All the weights and scales and balances are in his hand. He is a God of justice and a just God. He's got a way of balancing things out. He's got a way of causing things to happen both in this life and also in the next. So put your faith and trust in our God. Our God who goes by the name, I am the Lord your God Almighty. I am that I am. I cause to be what I cause to be. The God that you and I can always trust in. The God that you and I can always count on and depend upon. And what? Today, tomorrow, Stand the same, the free. brothers and sisters of Christ. The Holy Scripture tells us that the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, Would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the Word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them. We will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the Word. You have been chosen to fill specific positions of responsibility in this congregation. As such, you are to work with me, the call or made minister of the Word and Sacraments, that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. For to see that the service of God's house are held at the proper times, in accordance with the order of our church, that the Word of God is clearly preached and taught according to the Lutheran confessions. The 
sacraments of Christ are administered according to his institution. The provision is made for the Christian instruction of the young and old. The erring are admonished, and the discipline is maintained. You are to see that the temporal affairs of this congregation are properly administered, and that proper support is provided for the workers of this congregation, most especially the pastor and his family. We are to assist in caring for the poor and the sick, in cultivating harmony among the members, promoting the general welfare of the congregation, and in furthering the kingdom of Christ here and throughout the world. All holiness of life and work is the way of all who trust in Christ. It is especially important that you, as office bearers in his church, show yourselves by word and example, be patterns of good works and Christian devotion. In the presence of God and this congregation, I, I therefore ask you, you accept the office entrusted to you. You promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting the Lord, and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the government of the church. So, and answer by saying, I do. In love, I place you as officer and members of the church council of St. John's Lutheran Church of Polis in Nebraska. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful God, our Heavenly Father, enlighten and strengthen you in your office, that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and the good of his people. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have raised up these servants for work among your people. We humbly implore you to grant them by your Holy Spirit those gifts which they will need for the faithful carrying out of their tasks, most especially wisdom, strength, hearts. Let your blessing rest on this congregation, strengthen the faith, fit the love, and kindle the zeal of its members, that your name may be glorified, and that here in all places under heaven, the kingdom of your Son may be advanced. Remember with thanksgiving those who faithfully serve your people. We now retire from their time of service. And we pray that at the end of days, we with all your faithful people may hear the voice of Christ saying, Come. You who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who has reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go then in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For your labor, Lord, is not in vain. The Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Bless and serve you all. Amen. Now stand for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for all people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their deeds. Lord, in your mercy. What a life that Bobby Gold, Layla Alberts, David Brath, Alan Brathy, Pauline Franks. I grace you receive healing and strength from you. Today with us, I'll be thankful and sickness and health. My grant the strength to accept your will for their temporal and eternal lives, visit them their afflictions, and empower them through your word and promises of love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. All powerful creator, we pray you to bless the earth and make it fruitful. Drink 
work in abundance, whatever is needed to support our lives. Ross, we employ you to work with farmers. Grant us appropriate weather of sunshine and moisture. May both have a seed time and a gathering of fruits of the earth, thus proclaiming your goodness and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Your hands, O Lord, are all when we pray, trusting in your mercy. In Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Lord, is your kingdom to justify our Father who art in heaven.
Yes, sir.